Um, my name is Mark Ford, and I'm uh, from Long Beach, California. And um, um, God had given me music fairly early, like about 10. Like, um, and sort of saved me from a, from a life I couldn't really understand and it didn't really necessarily like. It was just bizarre. I couldn't quite figure out who was telling the truth and what, you know, what was going on. So he gave me music and I then sat in my room, I mean, from like Friday after school till Monday. When it's time to go back to school, I'd be in my room playing guitar with this piece and this presence. Like I, I, I would call it my porthole buddy. Like it's very, and now I look back and I know what it was. And um, it was grace. And, uh, but as I tell my testimony, I start to understand these things, like that was prayer all of those hours, like, you know. And so, um, and he gave me this just passion for music and, and a drive and, and a purpose. And, and of course, I missed it, you know what I mean? Like, it, there, was no, there was no church or religion or anything in the family, so the church was actually kind of wigged me out a little bit, you know. So I steered away from him. But as I got older, and actually, you know, mind expanding drugs and things like that, I actually st started to go, oh, what I always knew is really kind of there and true, you know? And, um, but still, like, I, and that's when I really started to get the sense that, okay, God's calling me, and I would just go, no, not now, like, I'm, you know? because uh, my Bob was buying into a lie about Christianity. Um, so in my pursuit of what I took, you know, a gift and, and sought things for myself, God's grace allowed me to get to the top of my dreams, to, to um, you know, tour the world in, in stadiums with, you know, top bands and, and, and make a living at it. It's all I've done for 20 years, 25 years. And, and at one point, um, in almost a cliche moment, like, you know, hanging after hours at, in hotel rooms, I, I realized like, wow, I'm looking at my future. And, and it doesn't change. Like, those guys are exactly the way I am right now in my 20s or early 30s. And, I said, this is not, um, it's not what I was looking for, or it, you know, didn't hold all the promises. So at that point, um, it was like I heard this pop sound, and, and, and that was the moment that instead of me doing drugs, drugs started doing me, because I had lost hope in any reason why I was doing this thing. And then I started even to, to um, blame music for my situation, and just really, was so confused, and so over a few years, it ended me in the in the hospital, and like hours away from being dead. And when they moved me from um, ICU to sort of this rehabilitation section, um, I'm in a room by myself, and and the door was open right across from the nurse, nurses station, so that they could hear what was going on. And I woke in the middle of the night to this electricity sound, and I'm like popping, and like a live wire was. Going, and what is that? And I opened my eyes, and there's lights filled with this blue light flashing. And I roll over to see what it is, and at the foot of my bed is standing the spirit of the Lord, like an angel of God, and all psychedelic, kind of, and came to me the way I would understand. And he goes, are you done? <laughs> I said, yeah. And my reaction was, what are you doing here? Because I had known him all those years. I known the presence, that peace that was in the room at the time. I'm like, oh, what, what are you doing here? And are you done? Yes, I'm done. And, um, and he's, he goes, it's time. I said, okay, and I rolled back or I went to sleep. 
and I didn't much think about it after that. Um, I had like profound experiences with that piece for quite a while. Um, and then, you know, at that time my wife had already started going to a very conservative church and she went far to the other end and, and so, of course, that made me look even worse. And, but it was a long process of bargaining with God how much I would give to him and how much do I get to keep because the lie that I had bought into was I loved Christ, I loved, I loved God, I, I just didn't like the Christians that much. And I didn't want to, I thought that, well, you know, that's, don't turn me into, don't make me mediocre, don't make me ineffective, you know, don't ruin my music, don't take away this gift you've given me. I, I, was, I had bought into the lie that if I give it up to God, it was gonna become something that I didn't even want to be part of, which is ridiculous, he gave it to me. You know, so over the years, um, I would say to my wife, I'd go, you know, I love these stories in the, in the church, and um, I got baptized in that church with my son, and um, I just said, you know, I love the stories, and I love what they're talking about, but I don't think God's here. I don't, I know God, and I don't think he's here, and I, and I don't, I don't see him in the people that are you know, I don't see the people living the way they're telling me I should live. And so, um, uh, you know, in and out of rehabs, and all they did was tell me that I was an addict and I had a disease and I just better get with it, and all the questions I had led to just, oh, just obey. You know, I know that it's okay to ask. and. I haven't, I never got an answer. And then so eventually, lots of therapy and, and um, understanding the psychology of addiction. And, um, having an epiphany about my, my um, identity that it, I, um, I wasn't a guitar player. I was somebody who played guitar. And I could take all of the, that made me great in playing the guitar and do it, put it anywhere I wanted to because that was who I am and not what I did. And that was, it just freed me up to then go back into making music again and traveling on the road. And, and, and then uh, my wife takes me, we had, we had divorced and remarried and split again. And, um, and in our attempt to come back together, the third time, our first date, she takes me to this vineyard church to see uh, who's now my best friend, Chris Lazat, lead worship there. And, and just, I got hammered with the Holy Spirit the second he opened his mouth. And it felt like I was on LSD again. And I went, huh. It's because it's an out of control feeling, which I think is why most people are afraid of it. And I just went, oh yeah, I, I, I'm good with this. This is what I think God is, you know? And so that was four or five years ago or so. And, and that's when it, I really started to sort of like fast track in a way. Um, and I went to the school of ministry and, and when I finally got so exhausted that I just said, I, um, okay, take everything, just take it all is when he goes, he just I went into a depression and he goes, okay, are you listening now? Like, do I have your attention, you know? And he goes, don't look for money, don't do anything and watch me go. You know, he says, I'm building a new foundation because what I have to give you won't stand on the old foundation. And he took me and my wife's relationship and bank account and just leveled everything and we were to live check by check that came from who knows where it would come from, right on time, right at the amount of money, and it's been almost two years now. And, in, and since then, I, I went to the school of ministry, and I just learned to just obey what he said. Like, when I gave it up, and I just truly 
learn to listen to his voice. I just do what he says. And he puts me in situations that I am not equipped for, so that I have to rely on him. And to be like, what's the best way to be a light? Like, you know, going back to, to where you came from and remembering your kind of mindset at that time, like, could any person have reached you? And if, if not, what's, what's, what's the best course of action? Like, what do we do? No, I, I ran to the opposite side. For knowing God was asking me to, telling me, I, I want you. Knowing. I heard him asking me to do it more than anybody else. And the more uh, my wife would poke and prod and try, you know, and strategically lay books somewhere, and, and it was just like, now you're just, um, you know, I can't find the word right now. I always, I always say nobody wants to be converted, right? No, um, it's, it's supposed to be an attraction deal. You're supposed to see something that you want and go, go find it and go get it. And um, I would say that most of the people that are running the farthest and are the hardest are the people that are closest. And they're just like, I don't, you know, I believe that if I turned myself in, in a way, surrendered to God, he was gonna make me something else and he doesn't, he just, dunks you in his love, gives you his heart, and then wants you to do exactly what you're doing because he gave you, most of the time, he, you're doing what he wanted you to do. And if, especially if you become um, excellent in, in, in any field, then you have influence in that field. He needs you there. The grace of God for me was that he allowed me to go as far, he fulfilled all of my dreams in the garage as a kid. And when I got there, I realized, man, this is not what I wanted. I believe so that now, I will never go back and go, what if? Or man, I should have just stayed where I was because the greatest day out of, you know, doing that doesn't compare to the worst day of, of you know, of, of doing things for God, because at any moment you can get in His presence, and there's nothing, nothing better. And does it seem like you know, in that world of sex, drugs, rock and roll, does everybody know that something's missing, and is it just, is it all, is everything become like a way to mask what we're missing? Well, I realized I was doing drugs to get back to my room. To get back to that sense of peace and security because the world was nuts. And, and I didn't have it. And so sometimes I could get a counterfeit of it through drugs. Um, and sometimes I would, yeah, totally. It was never enough, it was never satisfying. And I'd always push harder and try to get do get in more trouble. And like these bizarre gates would close and I'd be like, oh, why did they get to do that? And I don't, you know, it's like I was being taken care of to the point where like, no, okay, that's far enough. And looking back, you know, I see all this stuff. Then I was just frustrated and just, I couldn't, you know, I, I didn't get it. It's like, I have everything I wanted and it's not working out. So, and of course, and, and I would get visited again to go like, remember, I, and I'd just say no. There were a few times in my life I just flat said no, not right now. And he knew I was gonna say no all those times. He knows the whole deal. And so the only th thing that makes sense is that he, he, you know, that's another part of the grace. He allowed me to walk through the valley of death so that I can now help somebody going through it. Because I know one thing when I was in, like somebody trying to get you to God, when somebody was trying to get me to get off drugs, I don't want to hear a word you have to say unless you've been through it. 
You could have all the textbook knowledge in the world, but unless you've been there, you have nothing to say to me. And so, it's long boot camp, long training period, you know. And um, that, that's grace, <laughs> you know. It looks like you got to give up every. He does. He wants everything. It only costs everything. A wise man said that once. And but the return is unbelievable. I mean, you know. I'm being called a spiritual father now, which I never had a father. I mean, I had a stepfather. I never met my real father. So to now be called a spiritual father for these guys that I'm traveling with and um, actually being allowed to use all of the things that I've lived through. And um, I don't have to say anything. I just have to be there. It's amazing. 